Okay, we are going to talk about matter and why it matters. So, matter. Remember that matter is anything that has a mass and takes up space. And also remember that all matter is made up of atoms. Um, and remember, atoms are those little things that have three parts, the protons, neutrons, and electrons. And each of those protons, neutrons, and electrons are made up of quarks. And it continually gets smaller and smaller and smaller. But uh, for the purposes of chemistry, we are going to say that all matter is made up of atoms, and we're going to leave it at that. So all matter is made up of atoms, and matter is anything that has a mass and takes up space. So matter can be categorized as either a substance or a mixture. Okay, so... From the big thing of matter, we can draw two branches, and it is either a substance or it is a mixture. If it's a substance, a substance is a type of matter with a fixed composition. So uh, that means it cannot be separated by physical means. That means I can't separate it, meaning I can't just be like, I'm going to pull you guys apart. Um, so that doesn't work. So the two types of substances are elements and compounds, and we're going to talk about those a little bit more on the next slide. The other type of matter is mixtures. A mixture is a type of matter made up of two or more substances that can be separated, that can be separated by physical means, I, meaning I can instill some process that will separate it into its components. Um, and a mixture can either be heterogeneous or homogeneous. Um, and I'll talk about what those two mean in a couple slides as well. So we're going to start with substances. So substances, like I said, can be an element. An element is a substance made up of only one type of atom, only one type of atom. So examples of substances would be pure gold, pure helium, pure aluminum. Okay, that means there's a bunch of these atoms, but there's only one type of atom in a specific area, and that would be an element. Um, it could also just be one atom of that specific element, and that would be considered an element. Um, a compound. This is atoms of two or more elements that are combined. They usually are bonded together if, um, uh, in some way, and we're going to talk about bonding later, but they are hooked together in some way. Examples are water, because you see we have our hydrogen here and our oxygen here. They are bonded together, and that is a compound. And carbon dioxide. We have carbon, one, atom, or one element here, oxygen, another element here, and they are bound together. That would be a compound. Okay, so mixtures. Mixtures can either be heterogeneous or homogeneous. Okay, a heterogeneous mixture is a mixture in which different materials can be easily distinguished. The prefix hetero means many, okay, many or multiple, um, and so if it's heterogeneous, okay, that means there are multiple pieces that can be seen. Um, examples of a heterogeneous mixture would be like pizza or fruit salad or granite, you know how it has the little stripes in there, um, and um, homogeneous mixtures, the prefix homo means same. So it's a mixture in which two or more substances are uniformly spread out, meaning you can't really tell where one substance begins and the other substance ends. Um, examples of that would be like vinegar and salt water. If I dissolve a bunch of salt in salt water, I can't see the salt. It's in there. It's dissolved. It hasn't formed a compound, but it's dissolved in there. So it is homogeneous because I can't tell where the salt begins and where the water begins. So it is homogeneous. Okay, so when I'm determining what um, type of matter everything is, the very first thing I'm going to ask myself is, can I separate it? So if I can't separate it by physical means, if I can't actually physically pull it apart, then it's usually pure. If I can separate it, then it is a mixture. Then if it's pure, let's just go down one route actually. So if I cannot separate it by physical means, it's pure. If it only contains one type of atom, then I can say, oh, it's an element. If it is pure but contains two or more types of atoms, okay, then it's a compound. Let's go back up to matter now. If it can be separated by physical means, meaning if I can pull it apart, it is a mixture. Okay, if it is uniform throughout, that means you can't really tell where one thing begins and the other thing ends, okay, it would be a homogeneous mixture. A homogeneous mixture is also known as a solution, so please be aware of that. You will hear me say solution. Solution is a homogeneous mixture. 
Now, if that mixture is not uniform without, meaning you can tell where one thing begins and the other thing ends, okay, it is a heterogeneous mixture. And examples of that would be like chocolate chip cookies and soil. Um, so yeah, I hope that makes sense. So let's practice really quick. So a summer sausage. Um, a sausage is, you can usually tell there are little bits and pieces on that sausage, and so you can see that there are things. It is a mixture of stuff, and you can actually see little particles of other things, so you can tell where one thing begins and the other thing ends. So we're going to, I'm just going to make this bigger so that we can type this together, and you can put this in your notes as an example. Okay, this will be our heterogeneous mixture. Excuse me. Um, and our directions are in column B, list whether the substance is an element with an E, a compound with a C, a heterogeneous mixture with an HM, or a solution. Remember, that's a, um, a homogeneous solution. So steam. Steam. What is steam going to be? Steam is the gas form of water. So it is going to be a compound. Salt water, we just talked about that, so it's probably, if you can't tell where one thing begins and the other thing ends, that would be a solution, okay, or a homogeneous mixture. Pencil lead, or PB, okay, that's lead, um, that is going to be an element because it is only, it's pure lead. Dirt, okay, you can usually tell there are little bits of sticks and worms and all of this stuff, so you can tell where one thing begins and the other thing ends with dirt, so I'm going to say that is a heterogeneous mixture. Pepsi. When you open a Pepsi, you can see all those little tiny bubbles in there, right? So that would be considered a heterogeneous mixture because it has dissolved carbon, but you can see that dissolved carbon along with the rest of the mixture. Silver. Actually, I'm going to stop here and I'm going to have you do the rest of these as a practice on your own. So follow this flow chart right here. Okay, follow that flow chart if you need to draw it in your notebook or if you need to pause this really quick so that you can do that, do that. But let's go ahead and complete the rest of the um, practice, okay, on your own. And we'll talk about them tomorrow in class. All right, thank you.